kickoff weekend this Sunday and a busy afternoon of football here on Fox coming up. The second game of our double dip, the T.O. Tuna Melt in Jacksonville, or some of you will get the story Bears-Packers rivalry. No reason to get off the couch on this opening Sunday. The AT&T Game Break Show in between games in the doubleheader. Join Kurt Menefee for all the scores and highlights live from Jacksonville. Yeah, I think everybody wants to see how that T.O. Tuna situation is going to work out. Keyshawn's going to have something to say before this one's all done. Picking on Jason Webster on the right corner. A big gainer and a first down for Carolina. A good job by Keyshawn Johnson using those long arms. He's just going to come up and run this skinny post. Just jump right inside. Webster, the ball's thrown high, but Keyshawn has the length, those long arms, to be able to go up and make this catch. And with the pressure that Jake DeLome has been getting, they've got to throw these quick routes, the three-step drops, and get rid of the ball. Keyshawn, number 20 on the all-time receptions list. A little time for DeLome, hanging it into the corner for Drew Carter out of the end zone. And again, Jake DeLome under pressure. That time they try to come with the play action to hold the lineman, but it doesn't work, and DeLome has to step up and delay his throw just a bit. And you're going to see Atlanta's just getting a lot of pressure on him. The play action, and now look at Big Grady inside. forces Jake DeLome to have to step up, and that delays his throw just a bit. And now by the time he gets rid of it, Drew Carter's out of bounds. Carolina's offense on the move for one of the first times this afternoon. Atlanta's offense is thoroughly dominated and grab most of the minutes today. Second and 10 for DeLone. A little bit of time and the pass is incomplete. Tried to swing it out to his tight end, Chris Mangum. You know, and the, the problem is you can't double team everybody up there. They've got a lot of pass rushers. Here they're gonna block Hoover or they're gonna block Jordan Gross on Abraham and you just wrestle that guy to the ground, but when you do that now, you also have to worry about Rod Coleman, who was the other guy that got in and pressured Jake DeLome. And, you know, they've got a lot of guys up front that can know how to get to the quarterback. Carolina yet to convert on third down this afternoon. From the Atlanta 28. DeLome looking for the big ball. Keyshawn is overthrown, and he was covered thoroughly on that play. Kevin Mathis, the veteran free safety, had Keyshawn blanketed nicely for Atlanta. You know, we, we talked so much about Abraham and him getting a lot of pressure. Well, one of the adjustments that the Panthers made is they've moved Jordan Gross from the right tackle to the left tackle position so he can match up with Abraham. This will be a 46-yard field goal attempt by John Casey. He was 6 of 9 from this distance between 40 and 49 yards last year. He's already made a 54-yarder. Add another. John Casey has given the Panthers all their scores this afternoon. TV Digital ist da. 14 Tage volles Programm. Top-Übersichtlichkeit im großen Format. Neu und einzigartig in Deutschland. Komplett mit allen Programmen von Kabel Digital Home. Plus ARD, RTL, Pro7 und Co. in einem Heft. Alle 31 Kabel Deutschland Programme mit Bewertung und allen Sendeterminen. Bestellen Sie jetzt Ihr Abo unter 0805 99 77 44. TV Digital. Das ist die Zukunft. Detroit, Michigan. The Seahawks are set to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 40. Third and goal with the one. A bootleg left. And Ben dives for the goal line. It's a touchdown, Pittsburgh! And they hand it to Willie Parker. Finds a lane. He's on his way. Look out. Foot race 45 with me. Willie Parker. Matt looks, a lot of time, throws to the right side, got a man wide open, touchdown, Jeremy Stevens! Steelers lead 14-10, the quick pitch, and here comes the reverse. Randall L has got a reverse, he wants to throw, he does down the far right side, he's got a man wide open, touchdown, Pittsburgh, and that's your ball game!
Uh, the spirit of Otto Graham or a couple of big Pulp Fiction fans here in Charlotte today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you talk about <laughs> throwback jerseys and all that. They want forget that. Go back to the throwback helmets. Way too hot <laughs> to be sporting the leather lid tonight on opening uh, on opening day. Yeah, it doesn't look real good. A five-play drive resulting in the field goal for Carolina. Alan Rossum returning the kick up to the 25-yard line, and that's where the Atlanta offense takes over with 7.59 left in the third quarter, and the Falcons up a touchdown. rather calm and polite outside Bank of America Stadium a bit more physical inside this afternoon back with J.C. Pearson Matt Vaskersian from Charlotte and the Atlanta offense as they've been for much of the day on the field once again well, don't those guys know it's opening day today they're out there playing chess and not watching the game you can play chess anytime Dwayne Blakely was a man in motion play action Vic on the move and running for his life, trying to get away from Mike Rucker, he has to throw it away. Good job by Mike Rucker, and they know now that they've got to contain Michael Vick. So Rucker's just going to get up the field. He's playing the boot. You can see he's not going to bite on the run fake. He's going to stay up the field, run down the line of scrimmage. Don't allow Michael Vick to break contain. And then when he throws the ball, you come up and try to get a shot on him. Rucker has a rather unpleasant memory of one of their Atlanta games last year where he was taken down on a cut block and hurt his ankle caused him to miss the Tampa Bay game the following week. Part of the controversy and part of the acrimony that exists between these two teams. Vic looked off one man and then finds his secondary target gets it out to to Justin Griffith the fullback. A gain of 16 as we check in with Jake Glazer. Guys, one of the keys for this Panther defense, especially against Michael Vick, is the guy you were just talking about, Mike Rucker. Now, Rucker told me when he goes against Vick, obviously the bootleg is huge. So what he does is he keys on the running back. If the running back has his arms wide open, then Rucker knows it's a fake because his arms are wide open so he doesn't knock the ball out of Mike Vick's hands. If it's going to be an actual handoff, then the running back's going to tuck his arms under and take the ball. And that is what Rucker's key is on that in order to anticipate what Vick's going to do. Back to you. Well, it won't work the next time they play him, I guarantee you. <laughs> Hand off to Warwick Just gave Dunn. up the secret. <laughs> Sean Williams makes the hit at the 41-yard line. So a gain of maybe a yard on first and ten. But you know, going back to, to Jay in his comment, he talked about these guys watching extra film during the week. And you know, any little key that you can pick up on Michael Vick and, and how to contain him, it helps. And obviously that's a big key. No gain on that last carry by Dunn. So second and ten, Vick out of the shotgun once again. The three receiver set and he overthrows one boy a couple of hands had a chance at that one including a would be pick for Ken Lucas. That would have been big for this Panthers defense to get a turnover here and get it back to their offense and get back in this game. And I, I thought Michael Vick was going to run the ball here but trying to get it to Algie Crumpler and that ball just sails on him again. We've seen a couple times today where that ball's gotten away from Michael Vick and 
been high. Whenever that ball is overthrown and gets tipped, normally that's going to result in an interception. Vic now 9 of 18 for 139 yards and a touchdown, and Atlanta spends a timeout. Their first of the half. Six twenty three left in the third quarter. Take your best shot with a phone. The new K750i with autofocus from Sony Ericsson. Well, you only need to see six points for Carolina here midway through the third to be reminded that Steve Smith is not out there this afternoon. Certainly not sitting well with the Pro Bowl receiver. And on third and ten, the Carolina crowd making some noise. Falcons have converted on three of eight third down attempts. Vic in the air with a man wide open, but he couldn't get it through to Ashley Lalee. And that, that just wasn't a good throw by Michael Vick. They wanted to get him outside, so they blocked everybody down, and they blocked Julius Peppers. You're going to see him right here. Watch all the guys seal on him. Algie Crumpler, there's Wayne Gandy, and then he just gets sat on. But Michael Vick, not a lot of pressure. He's got to make this throw. He's trying to throw the ball over the top to Ashley Lalee, and he's got to make that play. Just the second punt of the afternoon by Michael Cannon as Chris Gamble makes the play. This Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, House comes across the strangest case he's ever encountered. Watch the Emmy Award-winning smash hit House, all new at its new time. Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, right here on Fox. Viewer discretion is advised. I'll tell you, House, he's the kind of doctor that, that I need to have because he, he can figure it all out, man. No matter what it is, in a matter of an hour, he's got it all figured out. Well, maybe House could figure out how Carolina's uh, defense can take a powder here today. They have been on the field an awful lot. It's the offense that takes over on first and 10 from the 21 yard line. The pitch to Deshaun Foster with a seam and tackled from behind by the safety Chris Crocker the new addition that came over after a couple of good years in Cleveland. And that's that old sucker play. They just sucker Chauncey Davis down inside and then just quick pitch outside to Deshaun Foster. Get a young guy out there, Davis in the backup. He's a little over anxious, and he's not going to make that play on the fullback inside anyway. He's got to do his job to stay outside. So a gain of eight on the play, second and a couple for Carolina. 15 carries, 54 yards for Foster. On play action, here's Abraham, and the ball's loose. John Abraham has been absolutely ferocious this afternoon. He is just crushing everybody that they line up on him. This time he goes around Jordan Gross, and then watch him just chop the ball. He's going to come around, and instead of just hitting Jake DeLome, watch this right arm. He's just going to chop that ball out of there right there. That's why he causes so many fumbles. Again, just speed rush. He gets Jordan Gross's hands down, and then he just chops that ball out with his right hand. And Gross, fortunately for Carolina, able to recover. Abraham has been a mess today for Carolina. Only Michael Strahan had more knockdowns and hurries last year in the NFL than Abraham. And DeLome, after play action, can't get away from Rod Coleman. Don't forget about the tackles here on this Atlanta defensive line. And you see how upset Jake DeLome is. And I told you, if you try to, to double-team one guy, that means somebody else is single. That time Rod Coleman is left single blocked, and he's the best pass rushing defensive tackle in the league, bar none. And as a group, those guys, have, that defensive front has 190 career sacks. And 
They're going to cause a lot of problems for people. You see how upset Jake DeLome is because he just doesn't have time to do anything. So the pro bowler Coleman forces the punting unit onto the field. The Jason Baker kick headed for Allen Rossum. Tried to hand it off, trying to get upfield now, and finally tackled at the 45-yard line. Vinnie Churchill making the stop on special teams for Carolina. 45-yard punt and a net return of four yards. Got a flag on the play here as well. Man, what kind of impact has John Abraham had in, in just week one? They brought the guy in, and you know he was a good player, but I didn't know he was this good. And he said he, when we met with him, he was so happy to be in Atlanta and just come in and want to fit in. Well, <laughs> I don't think he's just fitting in. On the kicking team, number 50, illegally downfield, five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Receivers will keep the ball, first down. I don't think John Abraham is fitting in. I think he came in and he took over. He's recasting the mold, and he's had a, a busy, productive afternoon, and th those might be the understatements of the game so far to come out of Bank of America Stadium. Abraham has put an immediate mark on what was, J.C., and let's face it, a, a really ineffective defensive line for the Falcons last year. Well, that's why they went out and they got Abraham outside to get up the field and pressure the quarterback. Then they brought big Grady Jackson, signed him inside to be their run stopper, and it looked like geniuses today. So around midfield is where the Falcons take over. They hand is to Warwick Dunn, who's also had a big day, and after a gain of four, he is tackled and punished at the end of the play by Julius Peppers. But now Atlanta's got to get their offense back in sync and in rhythm and, you know, get Michael Vick back in the creative mode that he was in that first half. And that's when that offense was really clicking and causing so many problems is when he was creating. Then they were able to get Warwick done moving a little bit in the running game. 19 carries, 99 yards for Warwick Dunn on the afternoon. Ashley Lalee checks in for Atlanta. And the handoff is met immediately by Big Mike Rucker. Chris Gamble came in on the blitz, but there is a flag down on the play. Offside, defense, 77. Five-yard penalty, replay the down. They get Chris Jenkins on the violation. Well, that's a shame. That takes away a, a big losing yardage play that Carolina's defense came up with. And it looked like Michael Vick might have might have come up on the worst end of this, J.C. Yeah, ugly play from the start. You see, he thought about taking a knee right there, and then he just gets hit from the backside. But I think the foot of Warwick Dunn actually got Michael Vick uh, in a bad spot, I guess you could say. Second and one now. Six penalties from Carolina. Warwick Dunn might have the first down. While they figure it out, let's go to Los Angeles and Chris Rose. All right, Matt, a scary sight in Kansas City. Trent Green looking for the first down on that extra effort. Gets leveled by Robert Gathers. No penalty called on the play. Green lay motionless. He has been carted off and replaced by Damon Heward. We will keep you updated throughout the game. Back to Matt and J.C. in the Glaze. Chris, thanks. Scary happenings in Kansas City for sure, and that's not the first time things have happened uh, to Trent Green early in the season. Yeah, that, that's big for Kansas City because they really don't have a, a proven backup quarterback there. Warwick Dunn has more than a seam. He's still on his feet, breaking another big run before Mike Minter can get him down. Wow, Warwick Dunn, he handed out a couple minuses on this play. When they grade this film tomorrow, these guys are going to get minuses on this play. He missed tackles. Warwick Dunn, again, just a slasher. Just going to come to the right, find the crease, and then just explode through it. And look at him. Just make Sean Williams miss right there. Just shakes him. And a couple missed tackles down the field, and Minter finally drags him down. But, again, they're starting to get this running game going again. Jarius Norwood checks in for Dunn. Warwick Dunn's 26th career 100-yard rushing game. And speaking of rushing, Vic uses the legs for an Atlanta first down and a flag at the end of the play. But again, even this, even though 
Wow, and Michael Vick is saying this is against the Panthers. I don't know what that could be. Holding. 93. Defense. Five yard penalty. Correction. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. They get Mike Rucker for the big violation, and that marches Atlanta even closer to the goal line. They'll take this at the five yard line now. And when you run the ball the way they've run it, now they come back with the booth. They're going to block Mike Rucker with Chris with Jenkins right here. Michael Jenkins, you're going to see right here. And you know, if anything, it looks like it would have got they would have gotten Jenkins for a hold, but they called Mike Rucker for just grabbing and pulling, trying to get by Jenkins, a wide receiver. First and goal for Vic and the Falcons. Dunn taking over in short yardage situations for Duckett, as we talked about earlier. Down at the one yard line, Mike Rucker makes the play for Carolina. And Rucker's got to be careful again here because upstairs they're seeing how fast he is coming down to try to stop the run, and he's opening himself up to the boot because as soon as he takes a step down, a guy like Michael Vick is going to be around the corner on him. Second and goal from the one yard line for Atlanta. All kinds of motion before the snap. The hand is to Dunn and a flag predictably on the play. Chris Jenkins just guessing on the play. Offside defense 77. Half the distance to the goal. Chris Jenkins. Replay second down. Always gets off the ball fast, but in this instance, he's just trying to guess and trying to jump the snap count and create some havoc, and they get him for offsides. Well, Chris Jenkins has played in only five games over the last two seasons due to a variety of injuries and, and you know, these goal line situations. Certainly, he hadn't been out there a lot in the last two years in any situation. So on second and goal once again. Carolina stacks up the line. Play action. Touchdown Atlanta. Who else? Algie Crumpler, Michael's favorite target over the past couple of years. Atlanta's lead, leading touchdown pass catcher the past couple of seasons on the board again for the Falcons. And that was a rocket. Mike Vick, he wound up and he threw that ball to Algie Crumpler. And this is something they're doing more of in the short yardage situations because they don't have that big back like T.J. Duckett, who was their guy last year. So they're throwing the ball a lot more in these short yardage situations. And Crumpler did a great job of catching that bullet. Kane on for the PAT. A seven play drive that covered 50 yards and chewed up three minutes and 43 seconds. Has Atlanta on top by a couple of touchdowns. See, Crumpler's just going to leak out, and Mike Vick, not much of a play action, but watch him throw the ball. He just fires that thing, and there's Crumpler just going to come and use his body, that big body. And look at that ball. Just goes out with those big hands and just snags that ball, and there's nothing you can do about that because Crumpler's too big to get around in that situation. You can see Draft was trying to get that right arm in there, but Crumpler at 260 pounds. He, you can't do it. Yeah, who needs to play action where you can put that that Elway pepper on the football? That's a fastball right there. Vic 10 of 20 for 140 yards and two touchdown passes. And Algie Crumpler on the other end of the most recent. You, you sense this crowd here in Carolina has been almost completely taken out of this thing. There's a little shell shock because folks here have been reading all exhibition season long about their Panthers favorites not only in the division but in the conference depending on who you talk to to get to Miami this year and the way they played last year had a great season and a lot of high expectations here in Carolina right now they're not not panning out very well fair catch called for on the kick and speaking of fastballs this week on Fox Saturday baseball most of you will see the Red Sox and Yankees some of you will see the White Sox and A's in a possible playoff preview. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern and Pacific only on Fox. For well, the White Sox, the reigning World Series champs, fighting for their postseason lives in a real dogfight in the American League Central. This looked like a fastball indeed. Lefty Randy wow. Johnson style. <laughs> 
So first and ten for DeLone. To the air and a first down. The pass caught by the tight end Chris Mangum. His first reception of the afternoon. Demoria Williams had to stop for Atlanta. And time winding down here in the third corner. As Michael Vick's getting re-taped up. Well, the only active QB with a better fourth quarter passive rating is Kurt Warner. Jake DeLome has been very good in fourth quarters throughout his young career, and he'll have his opportunity trailing by a couple of touchdowns here today. He's going to try to get rid of John Abraham from the rest of his life. That's the end of the third quarter with Atlanta up two touchdowns. Fox NFL Sunday will return after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. When you have a cold sore, don't hide away. Fight the virus that causes cold sores with the Virax Cold Sore Cream. With its antiviral formula, it can cut healing time by up to half. Zavirax, nothing works faster. Pick it up in store now. Small can be safe. As seed in our mother's womb, we are secure. Boom, 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 boom. Listen to the sound of security. Boom, 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 boom. Hypnotic, amniotic. Hypnotic, amniotic. Hypnotic. All is well. All is well. Oh, give it a rest. The Renault Modus with a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. Well, Jake DeLome and the Panthers offense have their work cut out for them with the start of the fourth quarter here. A 20-6 deficit. Jake 9-16 for only 98 yards through the first three quarters. Play action for Foster. He finds Keyshawn Johnson. He bounces off a tackle and is taken out of bounds by Keith Brooking after a gain of five. You can see what they're doing there. They're throwing the ball shorter distances now because when you try to throw the ball down the field, you have to have time to do that. They haven't had time all day, so they're trying to get Jake in a rhythm, trying to throw the ball quicker, shorter passes, and hopefully somebody will break the tackle and make a big play and that's where they really miss Steve Smith because he was a guy that could do that catch a five yard pass break a tackle and turn it into a 50 yard game after a gain of four second and six for DeLome Michael Gaines has checked in at H back and DeLome overthrows Gaines on second down for more on Steve Smith, let's go down to Jake Glazer. All right, guys, I had a chance to talk to Smitty before the game began. I said, exactly how many weeks will you be out? He said, it really depends. What I do is I put my heel against the ground, and then I pull it back. Until I can do that without feeling any pain or any tightness in that hamstring, I'm not going to come back. When I can do that without feeling anything, that's when I know I'll be ready. Back to you guys. Jay, thanks. And we talked about how the South is going to really assert itself quickly next season Carolina's in Minnesota and then they go to Tampa Bay I mean this Southern Conference this next NFC week. South yeah, next week rather right. it's gonna figure itself out pretty quickly this year third and six now takes progressions find an open man and a first down Keyshawn Johnson a gain of nine on the play and Keyshawn that's where he's gonna be real valuable for this team is he's a good possession receiver he's going to catch the ball if you throw it anywhere to him he's going to catch the football you can see he's just going to run up get past the first down marker and try to find a hole and he's a big target he can catch the ball and he's dependable he's reliable that's what he's going to bring to this offense would you believe that's the first Carolina first down of the game D'Angelo Williams first third down conversion of the game that is and a wobbler that's picked off by Jason Webster
tempers flaring after the whistle blows as Jason Webster, who was really limited in training camp with a foot injury, has come up with the pick for Atlanta. A frustrating afternoon for DeLome and the Panthers. for scheduling and information. The Pennant Race live on NASN. After the interception here, the Atlanta offense will have yet another opportunity, and they have taken advantage of their opportunities this afternoon on top 20 to 6, 13 26 left in the ballgame. The hand of Jarius Norwood, and he is swarm for a gain of maybe a couple. Really has been a great day for the Falcons offensive unit, JC. It really has. And when you can run the ball for over 200 yards in, in three quarters, that means you're dominating the line of scrimmage. And look at the number of first downs, 21 first downs. But look at the big plays, too. They're not just running the ball and controlling the clock. They're making big plays also. And whenever you can combine all of the above and then the effects that Michael Vick brings to this offense and what he does to a defense, you're rolling, and that's what they're doing today. They're rolling. No gain on that last run by Norwood. And on second and ten, talk about big plays. Here is the rookie Norwood once again for a first down. And this is going to be the time of the game where this young man is going to pay dividends because he's a bigger, stronger guy than Warwick Dunn, but he's got explosive speed. And he's going to hit it in there, get the tough yards, keep the chains moving, then they'll come back with Warwick done, and then they'll try to gash you, get Warwick to the outside. But Norwood is going to pay big dividends for them this season. A gain of 15 on the play as the Falcons, last year's top rushing team in the NFL, are over 200 yards today. Michael Jenkins in motion on first and 10 with the clock rolling at 12 minutes left. Vic has a couple of targets. I think he was trying to get that to Roddy White. Although he had Jenkins in the vicinity as well, the pass is incomplete. And good job by Rucker and Davis, again, containing Michael Vick. But this is not a good decision by Mike Vick. You're in the lead, and just throw this ball away. You see Thomas Davis trying to pull up, making sure he doesn't get a, a penalty like he got early in the ball game for roughing the passer. And again, going back to Michael Vick, you got to be smart. You're up 20 to 6. You can't afford to turn the ball over. And he threw that ball into double coverage. On second and 10 now. Oh, Vic has all kinds of real estate on the keeper. And a first down for Atlanta. So tough to defend. When you play a guy like Michael Vick, you've got to be so disciplined, especially on the backside. Watch Rucker and everybody come down inside. Thomas Davis comes down inside, and Vic just keeps the ball on that boot. And then you get Michael Jenkins out here just blocking out there, holding up Ken Lucas, the corner, and allows Vic to get a first down. But you've got to be so disciplined on the backside when you play Mike Vic. 49 yards on six carries for Vic, and that makes him Atlanta's third leading rusher today. That's certainly good news for the Falcons. Norwood with another Atlanta big play. We talked about Jarius Norwood and the camp he had. Had a fantastic preseason and certainly turned a lot of heads. They wouldn't have traded T.J. Duckett without the emergence of Jarius Norwood. A 62-yard touchdown run 
versus the Tennessee Titans. And if he hadn't already made the squad, they knew they had something special on this day. Yeah, and, and the most impressive thing to me is that he's doing it now in a real game. The one thing to do it in a preseason game when you're playing against backup guys, but he's been able to come out here against a very good or what's supposed to be a very good Carolina Panther defense and do it to them also.